History of South Shields The first settlers of the South Shields area were the Brigants, although there is no evidence. They built a settlement at South Shields. The Romans built a fort there to help supply Hadrian's Wall. Many ruins still exist today. The fort was abandoned as the empire declined. In the 6th century, Northeast England became a center of education as part of the Kingdom of Northumbria. The Vikings raided the area in the 9th century, establishing settlements and controlling most of northern England. The town was founded in 1245 and developed as a fishing port. Salt panning became began in 1499. During the Civil War, Parliament's Scottish allies captured the town, leading the Royalists to flee south, leading to the Battle of Bolden Hill. In the Victorian era, coal mining led to a boom in the town, increasing from 12,000 in 1801 to 75,000 by the 1860s. The rapid growth made sanitation a problem. In the 1850s, shipbuilding became a prominent industry. Zeppelin airships attacked the town in World War I, and Nazi air raids caused damage and death in World War Roman II. Throughout the 20th century, industry declined and services and tourism played an increasing role in the economy. Foundation and Roman Times The earliest inhabitants of the area were the Brigants, a strong and fiercely independent Briton tribe. However, there is no evidence to suggest they built a settlement where the present-day town now stands. It was John Lelland in the 16th century who first suggested the town had been known as Caer Urfuf. The Brythonic word Caer meaning a fortified place or seat of royal power, Urfa is suggested to be a simple corruption of vide in for the Aramaic name for the Roman stronghold. Broken Link A large Roman fort has been excavated in South Shields on the law top, overlooking the river Tyne, it has been the setting for an investigation by the Channel 4 archaeological television program Time Team. Founded c. AD 120, the fort is mentioned in the Notitia Dignitatum, a list of forts and bases compiled in the 4th century where it is referred to as Arbea. Arbea, meaning place of the Arabs, one of the garrisons being the Tigris boatmen from modern-day Iraq, was intended as the maritime supply fort for Hadrian's Wall, and contains the only permanent stone-built granaries yet found in Britain. It was occupied until the Romans left Britain in the 5th century. A Roman gatehouse and barracks have been reconstructed on their original foundations, while a museum holds artifacts such as an altarpiece to a previously unknown god. There is also a tablet with the name of the Emperor Alexander Severus died 235 chiseled off. The fort was at the end of a road named Recondike connected to a larger road which led between Newcastle Ponds Ailives and Chester Le Street Kinganges. Parts of this road are still visible in Reckenton near Gateshead. The Romans also built a small wharf in nearby Marston Bay for the purposes of loading sandstone from a quarry. The wharf's remnants are still extant, although time and tide have left little to see. Arbea was abandoned by the Roman Sea. 400 when Emperor Honorius informed the people of Britain that they must look to their own country's defense. One of the many peoples to take advantage of the Roman Empire's collapse were the Anglo-Saxons. Dark Ages Written in the 6th century is often considered a confused and violent place, the Romans taking their laws, gods and legions with them when they left. However, the northeast of England became a center of learning and education, a beacon of light throughout Europe. King Oswald of Northumbria united the kingdoms of Bernicci to the north of the River Tees and Dara to the south, creating the powerful and influential kingdom of Northumbria. In AD 647, King Oswy of Northumbria, Oswald's brother at the request of St. Aidan, allowed a monastery to be built. The site today is in the very town centre of South Shields and is named St. Hilda's Church, although the original Anglo-Saxon building is but a remnant under the present Norman nave. St. Hilda's was one of many monastic institutions along the coast of northeast England, including Jarrow, where the Venerable Bede lived and worked. C. 80, 865, the monastery at St. Hilda's was raided by the Vikings. However, the Vikings or Danes weren't just raiders. They created settlements, brought new customs, laws, and gods, 
effectively controlling all of northern England. This form of government was known as the Danelaw. The Anglian or Danish influence can be seen to this day, the Geordie accent which contains words of Danish origin and has many more Anglo-Saxon pronunciations than standard English. Middle Ages In 1100 the Normans built St. Hilda's Church where the nunnery once stood in the town's marketplace. The church remains one of the oldest churches in the UK. The first reference to Shields fishermen's huts occurs in 1235. On account of the complaints of the burgesses of Newcastle upon Tyne, an order was made in 1258 stipulating that no ships should be laden or unladen at Shields, and that no shores or quays should be built there. However, South Shields subsequently developed as a fishing port. Salt panning along the Tyne began in 1499 and achieved major importance. Daniel Defoe speaks of the clouds of smoke being visible for miles, while a witness in 1743 mentions 200 boiling pans. Glass manufacturing was begun by Isaac Cookson in the 1730s, and there were eight glass works by 1827. Coal mining and chemical manufacture also became important. South Shields had the largest Akali works in the world. In 1644, during the English Civil War, Parliament's Scottish allies under Alexander Leslie, first Earl of Leven, wanted to capture the Tyne and Newcastle upon Tyne. Leslie captured the fort on the law top, following a lengthy siege. After the capture, the Royalist forces retreated to the south and evidence suggests a consequential skirmish may have occurred in the small town of Bolden. The ensuing skirmish is known as the Battle of Bolden Hill, though the topography of Bolden is not favorable for a battle. 19th century. Following the Reform Act of 1832, championed by Lord Grey and the Whigs, County Durham was able to return two members for two divisions, and the boroughs of Gateshead and South Shields acquired representation. The coal industry flourished in Victorian times, drawing immigrants from far and wide. In South Shields the population soared from approximately 12,000 in 1801 to 75,000 by the late 1860s. Collieries in South Shields included Templetown 1805-1826, St. Hilda's 1810-1940, West Harton 1844-1969, Golden 1869-1982, Marston 1879-1968, Whitburn 1879-1968, Westo 1909-1993 coal mining was very hazardous. Shafts could collapse at any time, and before the safety lamp was invented in 1815 naked, flames carried by miners to light their way could ignite gas underground causing explosions and many deaths. Some mines even had shafts that stretched several miles out under the sea. Overcrowding in the town made sanitation a problem, partly solved by Cledon Water Pumping Station, a large tower erected in 1858 above the town following an outbreak of cholera. South Shields place at the mouth of the Tyne with shifting and unpredictable sandbars and channels into the river meant that ships frequently ran aground. Following one such incident, the world's first self-writing lifeboat was designed by William Woodhave in 1790. In the 1850s, with the Tyne's growing shipbuilding industry and the mouth of the Tyne, South and North Shields needed to stop the flow of sand that threatened shipping. In 1854, the first foundations were laid of the North and South Piers. They were both completed in 1885. An engineering problem was encountered in managing the new piers. The sand on Little Haven Beach was now flowing up the Tyne through the incoming tide. As a solution, the Herd Groin Pier was erected in 1882. South Shields born Charles Palmer opened his shipyard in 1851 at Jarrow, at first building wooden ships and then moving on to iron. His shipyard patented rolled armor plate for warships. In 1865, Alderman John Reed Head founded his shipyard John Reed Head and Sons in South Shields, which built small cargo ships and colliers for clients the world over until the yard was closed in 1968. 
various slipways and dry docks can still be seen today stretching from Tyne Dock towards the mouth of the Tyne. Turner made an engraving of shields on the River Tyne in 1823. This is now in Tate Britain in London. He also painted Keelman hauling coals by night in 1835, having himself rowed out into the Tyne at Jarrow Slake in order to do so. The town became famous for its maritime industries and the marine school was founded by Dr. Thomas Winterbottom in 1837. Originally in Ocean Road, it is now part of South Tyneside College in Westo Village and has an international reputation. From the late 1980s to 2008 it possessed the nationally unique combined public observatory and planetarium, which has provided education and entertainment for 20,000 children a year. During the industrial boom years of the 19th century, many notable public buildings were built across the town, reflecting its wealth. These included the Customs House of 1848. South Shields was incorporated as a municipal borough in 1850 under the Municipal Corporations Act 1835. It became a county borough in 1889 with the passing of the Local Government Act 1888, and remained as such until 1974, when it became part of the Metropolitan Borough of South Tyneside in the now former county of Tyne and Ware. The Shields Gazette, founded in 1849, is the oldest provincial evening newspaper in the United Kingdom. 20th Century In 1908-1909, the Harton Coal Company, which by this time owned all of the collieries in South Shields and the surrounding area, as well as the Marston limestone quarries embarked on a scheme to almost completely electrify their collieries, both above and below ground, including the network of lines connecting the collieries at St. Hilda, Parton. Wagons of coal from Bolden and Whitburn were steam hauled. Siemens carried out the electrification work, as well as supplying the locomotives for use on the electrified sections of the railway. When this work was completed, the electricity used by the HCC at the five collieries amounted to around 6% of that available to the coal industry as a whole, which for a time made it one of the largest single users of electricity in the entire country. The last of the Harton Electrics were retired in 1989. Four of the locomotives are preserved, effort at the Stephenson Railway Museum, at Wawet Beamish Museum, with Etten and the AG built a nine, at the Tanfield Railway. The Rattler Pub on the seafront is named after the passenger service run primarily for miners by the HCC between Westo Lane Station and Whitburn Colliery using a motley collection of second-hand rolling stock which gave a very rough ride and resulted in its rather unflattering nickname. Most of the tract of the Colliery Railway has either been built on or turned into footpaths. The impressive South Shields Town Hall of 1910 bears a copper weather vane in the form of a galleon. The town's crest premise 1974 featured the lifeboat and the associated motto Always Ready, which was later adopted as the motto of South Tyneside. Zeppelin airships raided the Tyne in World War I, and the town's seafront amusement park was attacked in 1915. In World War Roman II, South Shields suffered well over 200 air raid alerts and 156 people were killed. Many houses were damaged, particularly by incendiary bombs and parachute mines. One direct hit on the marketplace killed more than 40 people who had taken shelter in tunnels below the square. There was a memorial to them in the form of a cobbled Union flag on the ground of the market square, however, this was removed as part of an overhaul of the town center in the late 1990s. South Shields lost more seafarers than any other port in Britain during World War Roman II. The celebrated artist Ellis Lowry spent frequent periods at the Seaburn Hotel in Sunderland and painted a number of works in South Shields. Historically the town was part of County Durham, but it became part of Tyne and Ware in 1974. In 1977, the town was visited by boxer Mohammed Ali, whose wedding was blessed in the local mosque at Legate. The visit has since been the subject of a BBC documentary. Ali visited the town after receiving an invitation from a local boys' boxing club. On 1 September 1987, 
Johnny Cash performed an open-air concert at Bent's Park. Recently, a lost interview was discovered, the only interview granted by Cash just before this show. South Shields has undergone significant economic change in the light of deindustrialization. Service industries, including tourism and retail, play an increasing role in the economic makeup of the town and indeed across the wider area. Equals equals references equals equals equals.